So the spring semester, you are going into a time of the year where you need to start getting through school a little bit quicker, and Walsh is here for it. So my name is Jay Kruger. I'm coming to you from the Walsh College Creator Lab, and uh, I'm sitting here today with Abby, and Abby is actually uh, oversees our admissions team, so I wanted to bring her in and really be able to com have a conversation about what is the spring semester? Why is this kind of an added benefit that most colleges don't have? And what is Walsh doing to make sure that you can get to the workforce faster? So Abby, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, uh, talk about kind of the team that you oversee, and uh, and then we'll get into it. Sure. Yep. I'm Abby Bellamy. Um, I'm the Director of Enrollment here at Walsh College. Um, I oversee uh, the Admissions and Enrollment uh, Department, which Jay mentioned. So my team handles and works with um, both undergrad and graduate students, um, as well as doctoral students. But uh, we work them through the process from, you know, just getting some basic information about Walsh College, what programs are offered, how they can get started. Um, the transfer process for our undergrad students um, all the way through their their first term of enrollment. Yeah, that's it's really cool. And your team has really been on top of things. Uh, it's been an oh, interesting <laughs> it's been an interesting uh, year or so now of kind of revamping what that process looks like and really trying to make it easier for our students. What are some things with your team? Uh, that you're really excited about? What are what have they been working on that you're really excited about? Sure. So um, what we've really, you know, put a large focus on is kind of getting out there and building these new relationships and not so much focusing, you know, on, on new people to come to us, but we want to be out there and we want to help who we can and really start to nurture those relationships and, you know, communicate with businesses and let them know what's available for employees, anyone looking to go back to school, really. So um, that's been a big focus that we're really excited about. Um we're also, you know, trying to work with um, more and more community college students through that process. That's been kind of a large revamp, and Karen Mahaffey's been a large part of that, recreating those relationships with our community colleges, um, and really helping to identify those pathways and what those look like for students. Um, with so many new uh, bachelor's programs launching at Walsh recently. And how many do we have now? Um, we are at, at 24. 21, Seven, I believe. Yeah. I think we added that And out? then plus concentration. Yes. yes. <laughs> so it's, yeah. No, yeah. It's, and it's really cr pretty crazy. I mean, it, and it's the expansion of the undergrads at this point. Yeah, is, absolutely. You know, the, the restructure of the BBA was a, was a big one. Huge. Uh, and really being able to cater to so many people and everything that they could possibly be interested in. Absolutely. We definitely saw um, there was a need for an entrepreneurship program. Um, we also launched the operations and then international business um, has also seen some interest. So like you said, just the expansion itself has, yeah. has allowed for so much more growth and opportunities for students. For sure. And, and you know, and there's, there was even the one, uh, you know, you and I had talked recently about the BSAM program mm -hmm. and that being a little bit different than, than a lot of our other programs, because it does come in from, from somewhere that maybe hadn't been considered for a, for a business degree. Sure, sure. Um, can you talk a little bit about the BSAM? Yeah, I think the BCM, um, like you said, sometimes it kind of gets gets forgotten about. Um, and what's great about the BCM and, and the revamp with that is that students can come in uh, with an associate's degree in applied science. We've also opened up the BCM program just recently um, to include any associate's degree, uh, general or with a specific area of study. Um, so students can come in and get started in that program and finish a little bit quicker uh, with the the BCM degree. Yeah, so that that Bachelor of Science in Applied Management, and it's mm -hmm. such a unique uh, program that way. And in uh, you know, I've heard stories now of these students coming in, and they're coming in from from technical backgrounds and and really doing a lot of the the hands on things that you wouldn't necessarily think about as a business degree. Sure. And then as you get into it, you realize, you know, there's so much more to it because a lot of those guys end up breaking off and starting their own companies. But now yes. it's, it's, you know, you have to manage accounts and you have to manage mm -hmm. money and you have to do all these things that maybe wasn't part of their original education. So it's a really unique program that way. So as we, as we go into the additional programs and you talk about some of the community college relationships and you guys getting out into the field and, and building on those relationships, what are some of the things that your team's doing? What are some of those, the, the opportunities they've had to go to events? Sure. So we're, um, a lot of what we've, we've done is to try, like I said, build these relationships, right? Not only with community colleges themselves, but professors, um, teachers, you know, student uh, club organizers, things like that. So where we can actually get in and attend events with these schools and really have that presence for our students um, has been where we've placed a lot of attention. Um, you know, like you said, uh, transfer fairs, um, career nights, anything and all things that show opportunity for our students. 
Um, and then also, you know, prior to community college level, just getting into those high schools as well and getting ahead of that game and, and showing those students and their parents what opportunities are and what that pathway looks like. Yeah, let's. I want to dig into that a little bit because sure. that's something that I find a lot of my conversations lead into when I tell somebody, you know, I work for Walsh College, we're an upper division only, and they're like, what is that? Right. Is and, and I always tell them, like, it, it means that these partnerships are so important. And so when we talk to these community colleges, it's not just, oh, we're going to go and work with you and do these things because everybody else is doing that too. Mm -hmm. But we're talking to you because we strongly believe that we are, the, we are the best option for you to partner with. We are going to bring in the highest number of credits. We are going to work with you the closest on transfer. Right. We're going to do these things and, and we are not your traditional college, but that, that's by design. And so talk to, talk to me a little bit about it when you, when you are talking to these high schoolers, what does that conversation sound like? Cause they can't come here right away. So Correct. what does that conversation sound like with a high school student? Yeah. So for a lot of high school students, they just don't know. Yeah. Right. It, it's a lot of just question asking and kind of getting them to the point where they can answer, you know, a general idea of what, you know, what, what does my pathway look like? Well, obviously our pathways uh, incorporate our community colleges or other, you know, starter institutions where the student has to go to complete their, their first credits. It's really just helping that student identify what the potential opportunities for them might be, um, but letting them know the end game. So you, yes, you go to community college, you can even start early college and high school, you can earn credits through high school, mm -hmm. AP credits transfer, all of those things. And then you go to community college and you complete, you know, a certain amount of credits there. Um, and then once you hit 36 credits, you are, you know, you are eligible to enroll concurrently at Walsh College. So whereas they weren't able to start until later on, mm -hmm. um, you know, now there's an opportunity for them to begin even sooner right. with Walsh College right. and just knock out a couple extra credits. Absolutely. Finish at the community college or your transfer institution, wherever you're at, mm -hmm. um, but at least get a jump start. you know, and, and it's, it's really though, when you talk about high school, it's just getting that student to understand the opportunities and what that pathway looks right. like. Well, and start what the finish. savings are. So Absolutely. We're, I mean, right now we're talking about a savings. If you go from high school to community college to Walsh, we're talking about $30,000 in savings At versus, least. versus that four year institution. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I, and I think that's such a thing that, that maybe high schoolers don't understand as much because it's sure. monopoly money to them, yes. right? It's, it's not the same <laughs> yes. thing. So it, it is getting them to understand, like, I, I know right now this seems like pretend money, Mm -hmm. But it's just not. And it's in, and you know, as somebody who has been paying on my student loans forever and ever and ever, mm -hmm. I think back now and I'm like, man, if somebody would just hold me when I was right. 18 in a way that I understood that, right. that would be, that would be incredible. One other thing you mentioned that I, I would love to hear a little bit more on is you talk about that concurrent enrollment. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about that uh, community college and Walsh a, a simultaneously. Sure. Can you talk a little bit about what that is? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we call it the Walsh Now program. And what that is, is, you know, we, we have students who are at community college who start there um, and they are continuing to take courses at the community college. While they're still taking courses, they have the ability and the opportunity to start at Walsh and concurrently enroll in both schools. Okay. So it allows them to take classes at the same time at both schools during a term. Um, what that allows them to do here is get a jump start on their degree. We ha obviously have some early on classes, uh, you know, some, some core classes that they can at least knock one or two out of the way. Um, while still taking those um, degree-specific courses at the community college or transfer institution. Right. Uh, but it does give them that opportunity to just kind of get a head start, um, get something going, feel comfortable with the school that they're coming to, get familiar with the campus, you know, the policies, procedures, get to know staff, right. um, you know, things things along those lines that really just, just bring them in and, and nurture that transfer process for and make sure. them feel comfortable here. Yeah, no, and it's it's an incredible opportunity for them to really start getting involved even Absolutely. before they've done that complete, like, that's where I'm in, I'm in, right. I'm signed on the dotted line. <laughs> right. It really allows them to start getting involved in the college and what, what we do here and why, and why it is different. You use the term jumpstart, you know, their education, but I think on that same vein, we can kind of talk about you know, moving into the next step. So they can kind of start to jumpstart their careers with this bonus semester that we have. So mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about the spring semester that we have coming up. So uh, it starts in April, beginning of April, uh, and you're done by June 16th is the end of the semester. So there's kind of this, this funny semester in there where because Walsh is designed the way that it is, we have four semesters a year. Right. And 
you know, in the marketing world, we like to, we like to point out that the entire college was designed around working professionals. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you're at the undergrad level or the grad level or the doctorate level, it doesn't matter. We, we are designed for those who are in the workforce working. Right. But on the undergrad level, a lot of times what they're trying to do is get to the workforce faster. So let's talk a little bit about the spring semester and kind of how that falls into all of what Walsh is doing in the ecosystem. So uh, like I said, it starts in April. Mm -hmm. um, April 1st. Okay. So when you look at the the community college and you talk about that concurrent enrollment, and we talked about that piece, but when we talk about the timeline of community college, where does where does this spring semester fall in with that timeline of for those students who are finishing up at the community college? Sure. So community college um, schedule, you know, typically their winter term begins in January uh, and that runs through about May. So for a lot of students, you know, in, in a perfect world, it would make sense to just start after that term ends. Mm -hmm. um, for community colleges, though, that, that are in our area and that we work really closely with, they have both an eight-week term and a 16-week term for classes. So for students who, you know, particularly are enrolled in these eight-week courses, they're done, you know, by March. And with that next, you know, term starting here, that special term uh, at Walsh, um, starting in April, it gives them the opportunity to just, again, kind of squeeze in a class or two, get started on your journey here before continuing with your semester uh, in the summer, you know, with your community college, concurrently enrolling. Um, for students who are in the 16-week courses, you can still concurrently enroll here at Walsh um, during those classes. You're starting just a little bit earlier, but again, if it's one or two courses, just intro courses, we're trying to get you on board, we're trying to get you comfortable with the right. transfer process here, um, but it does offer a great opportunity. Um, you know, and, and I think too, the name being our spring term, community colleges, other institutions, they are still in that winter term. Uh, so we want to make sure that we emphasize and, and we're very specific when we say our spring term is not our winter term. It's a completely separate term. Um, and it is kind of a bonus term. Mm -hmm. It gives students an opportunity to just get started with a class or two and right. Or great. get ahead yes. over their, over their friends get that right. go to the four year. They and yeah. And you mentioned as well, you know, getting into the career as soon as possible. As soon as you're here at Walsh, you have the lifetime career services. You have access to the internships and everything like that. So it really does open doors for yeah, students the it, sooner they can start. For sure. And, it, and that's been a really interesting thing for me. Uh, you know, I've, I've been at Walsh now for a handful of years. And one of the things that's been so fascinating is I have these students where they're done with their entire degree, uh, almost a full year in front of their friends that went over to some some four year university, mm -hmm. and they're they're in there already making their money, and their friends are still finishing up their last semester. Sure. And it, uh, to me, that's been something that's been so fascinating, and especially now we start looking at the graduate level. So now maybe these students are coming back later in life, or maybe they continued on straight through. But now they got they have commitments. They got things outside of here that right. they got to do. Talk about, talk to me a little bit about why why Walsh is structured the way that it is. And we you know we we talk about this being catering to working professionals. Mm -hmm. But why is Walsh structured this way? Um, that's exactly it. Uh, us offering four eleven week semesters is meant to benefit and and be an advantage to our students. Um, especially at the graduate level where people are already working. They have a full day schedule. They have a family. They have kids. They have obligations. Um, you know, for a lot of us, we can relate to that. And, and you know, myself specifically, I finished school after having a family. Uh, and so it's a very real world situation. And it, it's meant to um, cater to people who are already in those, in those lifestyles, right? Um, but us offering the four terms allows students to finish faster. And like you said, if you if you play your cards right, you're finishing some students almost a year early, yeah. um, as compared to the, the other four year institutions. So it really does cater to that. I would say, in addition to that, with courses being um, you know mainly online, hybrid options available, courses being later at night, it really again just caters to people who need to finish their workday, wrap things up, and then re refocus on school and, and be able to you know give that attention to their classes and, and make sure that they're finishing uh, effectively. Yeah, for sure. And I, and I fell into the same boat. I, yeah. I had a, I had a one-year-old when I started my, my master's program and it <gasps> was this, and a full-time job that was, you know, a lot. And then a kid on top of it and just schedules in yeah. general. And it, it's a lot, but it, I, what I found was it, it's really seems to be education around your life instead of the other way around. Oh, absolutely. It, it's been very, very nice. Absolutely. And I think as well, you know, with, with so much of our faculty still working, uh, in the industry right now, they really understand that. 
Um, and and that, that's relatable for students to come in and, and be able to, uh, you know, have a professor who understands, yes. I've got something going on, you know, I need some extra help, whatever the case might be. But um, it really is is very relatable. And like you said, we're, we're building our educational institution around our students and around their lives. Right. Yeah, it's, it's really incredible. So I'll, I'll take that even one step further. So recently we started partnering with the Troy Chamber of Commerce. Mm-hmm. Uh, and through that, we were able to launch a, a PEP program. Sure. So tell me a little bit about what that program is, who can get involved, and, and what does it do for them? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the Preferred Educational Partnership uh, with the Troy Chamber is uh, open and available to any Troy Chamber member. Um, so anyone who works for a Troy Chamber member company. Um, in addition to that, it is also available as a benefit to their spouses or children or dependents. Um, and what that that discount is, I know it's great, it's, right? It's really incredible. <laughs> it is. It's what a what a cool way to do that Absolutely. to extend it even beyond just the employees, right? It's, and then it allows people to think long term. Mm-hmm. If I'm with this company, this will be a benefit for my children. Um, and so it is great. And what that offers and, and what that allows is for a five percent tuition discount for our undergraduate students and a fifteen percent discount for any master's program or doctoral program. In addition, it's also um, the 15% for professional development, building rentals, um, things along those lines. So it is a great opportunity. That's that's really, really incredible. And that's uh, in, in they can... People can find that through the Troy Chamber. Yep, absolutely. On the Troy Chamber website, okay. um, just under uh, education, there's a tab right there. They'll go in Perfect. to fill out a request for information for that. They will hear from um, one of our admissions uh, representatives and we'll get them as much information as needed, but that's really kind of incredible. how to start getting the ball rolling. Yeah, that's really, really incredible. Yeah. So uh, as we go into the the final bit here, so a uh, couple, couple of highlights. So your team is very much connected. It is meant to be that they are very forward facing. If people have questions, that we are quick to the answer. We are here. Yeah, your yeah. your team has been very very interesting that way. It, <laughs> it's like a challenge at this point of like, <laughs> right. can we catch them off guard? And you can't. Right. It's it's a losing Good. battle. Um, so your your team has really been fired up about these community college relationships and getting people started and getting people to understand what Walsh is doing and and how we can benefit for them in any way. Spring semester, bonus semester, mm-hmm. let's get people started early, get that Walsh now, that concurrent enrollment with community college, get that, get in for the spring semester, be done, get a semester under your belt before summer even begins. Yep. And uh, and then this PEP program for everybody. Absolutely. It's really incredible. Yeah, and I think too, you know, there, there are a lot of people out there who might not know where they stand with the PEP, right? Do I qualify? Do I not? Is this something I can, I can uh, be eligible for? Um, just get in contact with us. And we're more than happy to look into it for you. We'll communicate with the company. We'll communicate with um, the Troy Chamber. Um, we're here to be that middleman and to help you find that opportunity and to make that a, a possibility and an option. Well, and even if it, and even if you don't qualify for the PEP program, your team seems to be very willing to help you out with grants and financial aid and scholarships and other yes. means to to make up that those funds that maybe you didn't even know existed. Absolutely, yeah. Our, our financial aid department has been so so helpful uh, recently. Um, and we've really kind of restructured as well how we award um, uh, scholarships or aid to concurrent enrollment students. So, you know, it, and that's a concern for those students. You know, absolutely. I don't want to take out more loans. I don't want to take aid at both schools. Um, being concurrently enrolled allows you to qualify for our, our donor scholarships here at Walsh it's and incredible. also our merit scholarship. Yeah. So even though you may be only taking one class, as long as you're part-time between both institutions, you qualify for the Academic Excellence Award and our 100-plus donor scholarships. That's really incredible. I just saw a statistic that uh, for the winter semester, Welsh gave out $750,000 worth of financial aid and scholarships and grants. Huge. It's just incredible. Absolutely incredible. So- Abby, I really appreciate you chatting with us today. Yeah. I'm excited about what your team is up to. I'm excited about the future of Walsh and what we have going uh, in this spring semester, bonus semester, and getting people in here, working around their lives and making sure they are ready to go for the future. I love it. Thank you Thank so you. much for having Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.